Welcome back, you guys, to another episode of The Path of Believer. In today's episode, we are back together for another deep talk session. And today's deep talk session is going to be an amazing one due to the fact it is all about spreading the reality, the fullness, and the glory of Christ throughout all the nations. And for this episode, we, I am so honored and so amazed and just excited to bring to you guys Andre and Kyle. Now with Andre, I pretty much grew up with, with him ever since I was like 15, whenever he got married to Aneta. Um, I pretty much grew up in faith through him and with him, and I learned so much from him. And then uh, Kyle, I have not met, met Kyle for too long, except for here, but I already know that we're, we're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed by uh, his presence here and just what he's going to be sharing with us today. And then we also have Daniel, and Daniel is always here yes. with us. Now, the reason why we're doing this episode is is because of the importance of spreading the gospel first, the importance of being being with one with the Holy Spirit and what he knowing what he's saying, telling you, and also about how to inform the people around you, and also to push you guys out of your comfort zones. That's the biggest mm -hmm. thing. Pushing you all out of your comfort zone to know that hey, I can start sharing the gospel too. It's not something crazy, it's not something impossible. This is God. This is who he is. I'm going to start sharing. That's going to be my first question is, how did you guys get into this field? Uh, um, well, we, basically, what really got us uh, connected was the Great Commission Society. Uh, that's what got me uh, uh, evangelizing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kyle joined. And we, uh, well, before even Kyle joined, I think our, our passion was always to evangelize yeah how old were you guys when you guys like heard about the great commission and so i was 18 when i heard about it um so i was 18 i came to christ when i was 18 got uh i gave my life to him i heard a cr crystal clear gospel um I, I was in church i heard the gospel uh but it was uh but the gospel was really never the gospel it was half the gospel or half oh, truth cherry picked yeah so so i thought the gospel was a lot of it was good works and I thought evangelism means you have to save souls. Um, yeah. After really coming uh, really deep uh, and, uh, and, and sc uh, scarred in my, in my journey with Christ because nobody was coming to Christ. And uh, uh, my works were just um, a, a bunch of uh, cinder all over, all over me, what I can do. So yeah. um, I was not fulfilling faithfully the Great Commission, nor was I walking my faith with Christ uh, until somebody exposed to me through the gospel and explained to me accurately exactly how to do it which was tony anthony and um that's when my journey really started and uh and also kyle joined me on this journey um and we um wanted to make sure that uh uh people that hear us don't represent the gospel in a um in a false manner because now we have the truth and we now know exactly how to share it yeah um which um br breaks our heart when people who are passionate like i was when i see people that were like me who are passionate but um running in a completely opposite way or actually butchering the very thing they're trying to uh achieve from their... the from the beginning foundation of not fully understanding what the gospel is yeah and so they're, they're they have the heart but they're just uh, they just uh they just don't understand exactly how to do it because they've wow. never been really educated or um or just been uh, a lot of times uh lied by uh, by people who make the gospel all about souls and now we want to win souls but evangelism is not of winning souls it's actually the proclamation of the gospel uh which right. i think uh kyle will explain that a little better and um uh so once i recognized that um we're, yes the war we're in a war actually we're in a big war the, the war is for souls yeah but the only person who who can save soul, souls is actually Christ. That's right. Amen. That's right. I mean, so what I'm understanding is that, so what was the, I, I don't get what the full lie was. The works will be, will be enough or like, what, so, the, what, was, what was the, because. So there's, there's, yeah, there's two lies. First lie I'm going to, is about uh, what evangelism is. A lot In every church right now in America, probably all around the world, they will tell you that evangelism is simply everything that has to do with uh with charity so i can say wow. giving money to a homeless is that evangelism hmm. no uh how about reading the bible to a person is that, is that evangelism no how about bringing a person almost close to conversion is that evangelism 
No. So uh, it's just doing good things. It's doing things. And that checks off the, mark, the check mark for you. Yeah, it's doing things that we think uh, brings a person closer to Christ. We think that's evangelism, uh, which is not evangelism. We think uh, if a person, if we do those things, so if we focus that evangelism is doing those works and a person never comes to Christ, then we think we failed at evangelism. So yeah. therefore, if I fail at evangelism because nobody ever comes to Christ, then I fail at evangelism. Then I don't want to actually tell people about Christ. But what Jesus says, I go ye that. and proclaim the gospel. He doesn't tell us to save people. He says, just go share it. So if people come to Christ, wow. praise God. If they don't, you're still doing effective work. You know, um, simplicity. it Love reminds it. me of this um, concept that's biblical that like, if you're trying to like sow into something and it doesn't cost you anything, well, it's not really a sacrifice because a sacrifice actually costs you something. And it kind of sounds like what you're talking about, like going out and doing all these things like, okay, I gave somebody money, but does it really even cost you anything to do that whole aspect? Yeah. So basically, yeah. So basically evangelism itself is simply the proclamation of a message, isn't it? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not an ongoing thing. It's a, it has a beginning and an end. So simply, this is what evangelism is, is going out and proclaiming how to come to Christ, right? And how it, to get saved. And if you look at, if you look at second Corinthians chapter five, you'll see that Paul, he says this, he says, you know, you know, God was in Christ redeeming the world unto himself and has committed to us or has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. And then in verse 19, he says, he has committed to us the word of reconciliation the message of reconciliation. Wow. So that message is what we've been committed with. And Jesus in his ministry, he went preaching the gospel. But as soon as, um, right before Jesus sends back to heaven after the resurrection, he says, even as the Father has sent me, even so send I you. Wow. So Jesus presented the gospel. He created the gospel. He orchestrated the gospel. And he's given us the gospel as a message. So it's, it's important to understand um, the difference between the words of the gospel as well as the works or the effects of the gospel. So I can see, you know, me from the point of when I was unsaved to me, who I am as converted, I have lots of changes in my life. That's the effects of the gospel. And if I go and if I, if I give food to the poor, that's the works of the gospel. But that is not the words of the gospel. See, the problem is, is we think, well, I'm evangelizing if I give people food to the poor, you know, hoping that this will bring them to conversion. Mm. But then I think, hey, I'm doing evangelism now. Check. I'm yep. doing the Great Commission. But the problem is you can't get saved without the words. We've been committed the word of reconciliation. So this yeah. word is the share. And that's, that's our calling. So uh, taking it back, what's the first step? To becoming the to doing proper proclamation well the first step i would say is probably knowing the gospel is understanding I, I what we would call this is a is a gospel fluency can you speak the gospel so so people learn evangelism by um, learning a presentation that their church teaches and there's nothing yeah. wrong with that but the ultimate goal first is to have such a grasp of the gospel that you are fluent in it can you uh, for example i like to say can you say the gospel in one sentence you know can you communicate it that clearly or if you say, someone say, hey, you have eight minutes to speak in this situation. Can you go up and just speak the gospel as effectively as possible in eight minutes? Or what about 15 minutes? How can you make the most efficient use of this time? So understanding the gospel well enough yourself so that you can tell it to other people, I'd say, is the first step in being an effective evangelizer, we would say. So putting, so putting the time personally in your secret place, in your home study, not just, not just, I mean, yes, you can learn it at church, you can learn it at your Bible school, but like, I feel personally like it's it's really important to spend the time by yourself because that that solidifies a clear foundation for you at home. Yeah. So that way, when you go into the public, he said those things that I showed you in public, I uh, know that you do in private will be multiplied in public. Mm -hmm. So now that same thing comes out in public, and now you actually have a foundation to stand behind. I, right. I like what you said, Kyle, um, about the whole bringing out the gospel, not just you know doing the work, mm -hmm. um, in the sense of it, it brings this divide between. Like, for example, Bill Gates, right? Yeah. He does philanthropy. He feeds the hungry. He does all these things. However, he doesn't, from what, at least my knowledge, um, share the gospel, right? So me saying, oh, Bill Gates is uh, doing evangelism in that aspect of just going out and helping the, the hungry is not evangelism. He is helping people, yeah, but he's not, not directly doing evangelism exactly. like you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. So if we go on the street right now and we buy a homeless person uh, pizza and we get feed him pizza, and then I'll take out the Bible and I'll read him a couple of verses, and then we will um, uh, take him to church to, you know, uh, everything we did is good. It's very good. And it's, it, God asks us to do that, but none of that was evangelism. 
zero there was zero evangelism in there even though we could have prayed for him we could have um we could have uh read some scriptures to him um we did everything we could maybe for him to expose christ to him that's good we should do that stuff but we should not say hey we actually did evangelism no we did good works in the name of christ but none of that was evangelism why because if we um first of all it wasn't evangelism evangelism is an event as a beginning and an end so if so i'll explain to you exactly what exactly would be evangelism so let's, let's say we bought him pizza and then we uh, we 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 should read some scripture, but one of us will have to say, um, "Hey, brother, uh, we love you very much. Uh, we don't want you to go to hell. We want to share a message with you that would change Beginning. that would change your life. And this is how uh, the gospel would go. This is would be evangelism. When I would say, um, uh, if you would if you were to die tonight and you stand before God on Judgment Day, why why would why should God let you into heaven? Do you think you're gonna go to heaven or hell, or would you have doubts?" And he might say. Oh, I might have doubts and I'm going to say, or he might say, oh, of course, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm a good person. And uh, so, okay, you, you, you might be a good person, but then you can share a clear gospel. Well, the Bible says that 2,020 years ago, God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to come to this planet, become a human being to experience all the pain that I deserve to get punished for. He died on the cross for me. So if I believe in my heart and confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I will be saved. I have to believe that Jesus Christ died for my sin, that my sins were paid off 100%. I have to believe that my sins were paid off and that he rose again to prove to me that he is God, that everything he said in the Bible is true and faithful, and that my sins were paid off. So it's by faith. So if I explain to him how to come to Christ, it's by faith. I know a lot of times you can use uh, different analogies, like if I push you off 30,000 feet from a plane, well, you can try to flap your hands, try to save yourself, right? Well, you might save yourself from three seconds of 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 um of Pivot guaranteed death a little bit. Yeah, maybe. you can try to do these poses to kind of slow down the air, but you're still guaranteed death. That's kind of that's kind of our works, our good works. You can do a lot of good works, and we can feel good about it, but you're just you're you're there's still a guaranteed death. So that so what we have to do is Jesus is the parachute. We push that parachute which is Christ, and completely trust in Him. There's nothing we're doing. We're just, he's holding us, actually. All we're doing, we're just, we're just trusting in Him, and He's taking that. So it's by faith. So if that gospel message wasn't uh, explained, that Jesus Christ has to take the second I was born to the second I die, I have to have faith that Jesus Christ took all my sin that I did yesterday, 30 years ago. You know, when I was born, all the sins in the, in the past, in the future, all my sins, he has to take all the sins on him, die for that sin, and then so I can be guiltless before God. So when I do stand before God on Judgment Day one day, God's going to say, Andrew, why should I let you into heaven? I'm going to say, uh, Christ, actually, you're not supposed to, uh, but because you did die for me, I have no more sin so I, for me to go to hell. I have, there's, no more, there's no more guilt on my account. Therefore, my guilt was paid off. And he's, God's going to say, do you really believe that? I'm going to say, yes, I really honestly believe that, that Jesus Christ, 2,020 years ago, died for me on the cross. And he's, he's going to say, by faith, you do believe that, so welcome to heaven, my son. So it's by faith, it's inviting somebody to trust what Jesus Christ did. That's good. Not what I did, not what I did on my behalf, which most people actually um, uh, forget the, the evangelism part of the gospel and that. We have the good works, which is good. But the, it's about the heart. How about the heart? That's the big thing. How about the heart? I mean, here's here's another um, thing that like just just to pull stuff out because this is actually I'm even learning more things from this. So what is uh, you started sharing? Like you said, step one, it has a beginning and it has an end. Mm -hmm. But then w w people might start clarifying that because the way you said it, aren't you scaring them into faith? So so. Um, so the Bible says that the only per the only time people can come to Christ is by hearing. The Bible, Apostle Paul says, how can they believe, right, if they don't hear? And how can they hear if somebody doesn't go to them? So um, you, what you really want to do is you want to explain to them two big things. And one cannot be without the other. So first thing, there can't be good news without bad news. So you have to sure. first explain to them. So if we were in this house right now and somebody runs in and says, hey, guys, this house is on fire. And we're gonna look around. We don't smell no smoke. We don't see no no fire. Hey, there's no urgency. Come on, there's no fire. We're gonna sit here. So if you explain to them the bad news, hey, the house is on fire, and explain to them how the fire, how the house is on fire. Well, the God, the bad news is we've all sinned. 
we fell short of the glory of God. None of us are good people. Even though you think you're good, none of us are good people. We yeah. all deserve hell, a condemnation. We, we deserve it. We deserve, we are filthy human beings. We deserve to go to hell, filthy every single rags. person. But th that's the bad news that for the sake of justice, we have to go to hell. So imagine this. Imagine I'm a wealthy person and uh, you're, you, you, you own an orphanage. And I come up to you and I say, hey, I want to I wanna donate $2 billion to an orphanage. So I donate $2 billion to the orphanage, but I actually don't like you. So I take your life because I hate you. And then they're going to arrest me and take me to, to court. And the judge is going to say, this is a really bad thing you did for killing this person. I'm going to say, excuse me, judge. I just donated $2 billion to his orphanage. I'm a good person. This guy should thank me. But the judge is going to say, who cares? You took his life. So, but I gave him $2 billion. Doesn't that kind of outweigh it? It's like, uh, no, that's not how it works. It doesn't matter all the good stuff you did to him. You still kill this person. You still have to pay the penalty for what you did wrong, not what you did right. See, you never have to teach a baby how to do bad things. It's natural for a baby to whine, to get what it wants, to scream and throw a fit. You have to teach it discipline. Why? All people have, you know, have sinned. We've been born with it. It's a natural cause. So what's the problem? The problem is all have fell short of the glory of God. All have sinned. That's the problem. How do you fix that? Well, that's the good news. The good news is that Christ, 2,020 years, came to say, that sin that you did yesterday, the sin that you did in your secret bed yesterday, or that sin, I will take it as I did it. And then God is actually going to punish His Son, Jesus Christ, for what I did yesterday, for what I did last night, for what I did three years ago, ten years ago, and what I'm going to do. And Jesus takes all my sins as He did it, and then God kills His Son for what I did, but he kills, he crushes his own son just so my record can be clean. Wow. Such imagery. Now, now you'll notice when, when Andrew presents the gospel that way, he, he's got that gospel fluency. And, yeah. and a way to, to simplify that for maybe for one of your listeners, um, you can remember quick four points and they're alliterated to you know, effective gospel presentation. So I'll give you them four and I'll explain them briefly. So there's the context, the condition, the, the um, I'm sorry, the context, the content, the continue, or the condition and the continuation. So well, the context of the gospel, that's the bad news, you know, that we have sinned and our sin is separated from God and we cannot work our way to heaven. It's kind of like, kind of like explain someone they have a disease before you explain to them that, Hey, I have a cure. So the next thing is the content. So the content of the gospel is the good news. It's itself. It's the gospel in its most proper sense. So if you look in first Corinthians 15, it actually, Paul tells us exactly what the gospel is in its most narrow sense, mm -hmm. the death, burial and resurrection of the son of God for the forgiveness of sins. He has died for your sins. He was the son of God. He was Christ. He was buried. He rose again. That's the good news. So we have the bad news. My sin separates me from God. The good news is that Christ can reconcile me to God. The third point is the condition of the gospel. So the condition is how do we access that forgiveness to be reconciled from our sin? And the answer to that, of course, is faith. The Bible says, you know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his unbegotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So that's the that's the condition, what we must do. And then the fourth part is the continuation. So this, of course, is baptism and discipleship. You know, you think about um, Peter's sermon on Pentecost. You know, you know, he preaches the gospel and they're pricked in their heart. They feel the conviction. They believe in Peter's preaching. First question they have is, men, men and brethren, what shall we do? He says, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So that's a continuation. So the context, this is this is a quick way. So context, why is the good news good news? The content is the good news. The condition is how do we access the good news? And the continuation is what shall we do now? And that's the very easy way to present the gospel. So Michael, I have a quick... Um, Kyle. Kyle, I'm sorry. Why did I say Michael? Because you're so used to saying Michael a lot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Seriously. Um, Kyle, sorry. Um I have this question, like, and I think it's a question that a lot of people have. How do you have a good balance? Because there's this, like, very often this extreme in um, evangelism that sometimes can be taken where you present this disbalance of love and conviction. How do you, as a person going out, how do you, I guess, posture your heart or how do you set your mind on like, Lord, I want to bring this in a sense where this person is not like, you know, God is this raging full on going to destroy me like right now. And I am not going to receive, you know, his love um, because God is sure a God of righteous rage and a God of love. How do you present it in a manner 
when you're going out there where you're not becoming too hot headed of like like you for instance the way jesus walked you know, like my my first example is not not even like looking what the disciples they were or anything else my first example is always like looking back to what jesus did and jesus came into a city and uh first my the first thing i saw is that he took the temple and he tore it apart yeah then he sat down and he started preaching mm-hmm. and he started healing and he started doing uh, and like so like how do you, how would you present uh, w- w- in your in your mind like how how you understand the gospel how did you do it so, so that's, that's actually a fantastic, fantastic question daniel um and that's a really good balance that needs to be achieved so i i'm thinking in my mind you said so the raging god is the guy in the soapbox thumping his his black king james bible saying you're all going to house all, all all wicked sinners um so 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 yeah there's that end and then there's there's the person like 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 hey Jesus loves you. It's all good. And that's it. <laughs> exactly. So there's, there's that balance you yeah. have to achieve. Yeah. So I think um, there's a few ways I'd answer this, but number one is just how, how are you, what is your tone? Because here's the thing, we can't water down the gospel. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, the gospel sure. is that, you know, Paul even wrote, you know, it's the, the purpose of the law was to lead us to Christ. That's the purpose. So some people will get up and they preach the Ten Commandments. They're all, you've lied, you know, you've committed adultery, you've done all these wicked things. So I still have to tell people that. And I, and I sometimes I simply ask them that and like, like, hey, have you ever lied before? Well, you know that's against the Ten Commandments. And you can just simply ask them, like, do you think if God judged you by the Ten Commandments, then you would be innocent? And they say, well, no. I'd be like, and here's the thing, I'm not accusing them. They've already told me, like, hey, this is what the Ten Commandments, or just ask them, what is one of the Ten Commandments? Do you know one? Well, thou shalt not bear false witness. It's like, well, have you done that perfectly? And they, and they convict themselves with the law. And that's what the law is. The law is a mirror to show our sin to bring us to God. And yeah. in evangelism, the law is absolutely needed. You need that to show them that there is an issue and that the consequence of violating this law without Christ is hell. So you have to say that, but you say that in lovingness, but then you come in with the true gospel and show, hey, this is solution. This is, and now, now there's good. a big thing I always talk about in evangelism is the apparent motive. Why does, if I come up and let's say personal evangelism, this isn't a, a, a crowd of 400 people. Let's say I just come up to someone like, like, hey, I want to share the gospel with you, and I'm sharing the gospel. That person is thinking about me. They're saying, what is his apparent motive in sharing this? Like, some, yeah. a lot of sometimes people say, are you Jehovah's Witness? Um, but, you know, they think maybe that's my motive. I'm just, I'm, I'm part of a cult. Um, but I always think, what is the apparent motive? Here's the thing. I want my apparent motive to be this. Um, usually one of two things. I'm genuinely concerned about you. I truly believe that this Bible says that you are separated from God and the penalty is that you will spend eternity to hell. So I'm coming to you, getting uncomfortable, making this awkward and bringing this message to you because yeah. I love you and I want you to be saved. That's so good. I want that to be my apparent motive. The second thing is, is simply this, you know, I'll, and I'll just tell people this sometimes. Mark 16, 15 says, Jesus says to his followers, he says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I'll simply just tell them that, like, hey, I, I know this is awkward, but I'm telling you this because I believe Jesus and I believe he's God and he told me to do this. And if you don't believe, you go to hell. And, that, and they're like, okay, at least he's genuine. <laughs> I didn't like what he said. I mean, that answers the question that we were going to ask later on. Why should you preach the gospel? Why should you preach the gospel? Why should you go in and evangelize? Why should you share faith? Because you know, Jesus told me so. Yeah. You know, exactly. what you were saying um, to kind of like sum it up, it, it sounds like you're bringing it in a manner of compassion and empathy. And the story from the Bible that it's coming to me right now is Jesus and the woman who was about to be stoned. You know, Jesus, he did. He came there. He knew she was a sinner. And legally, you know, these Pharisees are going to. Yeah, she she was was supposed to die. She was supposed to die. And Jesus in this like, you know, I guess mic drop um, answer tells them like. Which one of you has never sinned? Throw your first rock. And it's like this point of where it almost breaks this religious system, yeah. right? Where people are so like centered on everybody else but themselves. And he just comes in with love and empathy, not watering down the truth that she did sin yeah. and just coming in. So just picking back, uh, picking back on what you said, the woman in, uh, caught in adultery. So that right there was the gospel. So you said uh, that she should have died. Actually, she should. Hebrews two, two, uh, she 9.22 died. says that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So according to scripture, according to that, she actually had to die. There's nobody, nobody paid a penalty. Nobody died for her. So she, she had to get stoned. She had to die. So what happens? The next words that came out of Christ's mouth, he was not supposed to say if he wasn't going to do what he did. So what he did after everybody left, he said, he says, he says, woman, where are your accusers? And she says, 
I don't have any. There's nobody here. He says, neither do I accuse her. Actually, he was the only one who could accuse her because yes. he was yes. guiltless. But so he lets her go. So by Jesus letting her go, look what he did. He takes that on the sin. He took it. Uh, so I want you guys wow. to look at this. That's so when parallel. they caught her, when they caught when they caught this woman, it says she, she was caught in a very act of adultery. Yeah. So I'm just thinking, how did how, how did this happen? So these Pharisees who had the wicked heart already, you know, I'm guessing they come into the door, they see her right in the action, they they catch her. Probably they despise her, didn't didn't you treat her right? They probably ripped ripped her out of the bed you know like where is jesus and honestly jesus was outside of the gates so they dragged her to jesus i'm they're probably spitting on her mocking her throwing her down the crowd is saying you should die everybody's accusing her i'm sure the streets of jerusalem mm -hmm. are probably cutting her up and then they throw her in the feet of jesus outside of the gates of jerusalem and says she needs to die so look what happens jesus says i forgive you look what happens a couple chapters later it's no longer this woman being dragged by those Pharisees. It's now Jesus being dragged by the Pharisees. Wow. But the same streets that are cutting him, the same people are spitting in his face. They're mocking him. Wow. They're embarrassing him, saying, you should die. And then they take him outside mm -hmm. of the streets of Jerusalem and actually kill him. So what Jesus, this is the whole gospel. The gospel being fulfilled. This is what happened. Is Jesus literally took her sin as he was in the act with that man. Jesus took that sin as he was in the act in that bed with that man. He took it as he did it. God killed him punished him as he did it just so she can go free yeah just so she can go free that's by faith if we believe that by faith that, that is... my sins have been taken by christ from the second i was born till the second i die all my sins have been forgiven by christ that is what faith that is the the gospel right there in that yes. story itself so good i love how you parallel that the, the, the way the way you guys explain the gospel is just <laughs> i mean Beautiful. that that's kind of that's kind of what happens when i'm reading the gospel i'm making all these parallels but this is just like boom yeah. <laughs> right in your face there's no there's no like there's no like leading up to it there, there, there and it, there really shouldn't be like oh well this is what what actually is going on it's just like here's the facts the truth shall set them free yeah that's a big thing yeah, yeah. um going on further i think i think that this is a good time to just say what um what's the drive what's the motive for how does because people we see multiple times and uh um we see multiple times that even I think it was Apostle Paul or Peter that he was saying that those people that I I, I go with, some of them have fallen away. Hmm. What what push it, what what should we be doing to be pushing ourselves forward? What should we be doing to to not fall? And the, this is where I'm going to mention the complacency. Like you know, the complacency of getting complacent in the gospel, complacent in the word, complacent yes. in the knowledge of God, and also the this scary. And I mean, it, it was, it's super scary for me because like every time I, I even mention this. Like the fear of the Lord takes over because I do not want to fall away yes. from the knowledge and from the connection and from the mm -hmm. uh, from the freedom that God's given me. You know, the law, like you were mentioning before, the law pulls us in to a lifestyle with God. It shows us it's the beginning step to a lifestyle because the law says thou shalt not kill. But Jesus says, whoever even calls his brother a fool is ready to kill him. You know, it's, 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 it's those, it's those things like the law is there, but then Jesus invites us into a lifestyle of that. Relational it's a whole entire journey. lifestyle. So the complacency, and what I mean by that is that while you're doing all this stuff, um, while you're going around and sometimes, especially like, uh, for people uh, preaching the gospel, you can start preaching, you preach and you preach and you preach. And then one, at one point you feel you start, you, you, you lose the reliability of, Okay, I need to come back to God so that he could fill me up. And then you're just like going from your own words. And like, how do you stay away from that? And not only how do you stay away from that, but keeping that fear alive in you that I shall not fall away from this because if I get complacent, it's almost like a couch potato. The more sedimentary lifestyle that we get, the more comfort that we have in Christianity, mm. we start, um, this is the way I was like, God revealed to me like three or four days ago, like about the couch, couch potato. Um <laughs> And the sedimentary lifestyle. I'm a nurse. I I'm go I go from health. And lately, I've been seeing that, that the gospel and how um, faith, uh, like how everything goes through the Bible, is actually a very, very, very similar to how the a life by itself goes, and how the health of a person goes, and like everything else. So sitting on the couch, eating and eating and eating, not going exercise, not going around, not doing all the stuff brings in a sedimentary lifestyle all of a sudden your vessels start getting more clogged your kidneys are starting to work less because they really don't have to your heart starts to go into heart failure your lungs are get, getting more fluid your whole entire body is slowly dying 
but you think that you're really not doing that much. You're just sitting on the couch. Mm -hmm. And they're like, uh, Daniel, I think that you have a really good thing about the complacency that what yeah. you like to share. So I was driving actually yesterday before we were getting all this ready and everything for the talk today. And we love to just be spirit led and like everything is just coming from the Lord. So I was driving and, I'm, and we literally were speaking 10, 15 minutes yeah. before I got this revelation driving to your house. Um, basically when we come to the lord um we are a vessel the we we are very often viewed as a vessel uh, scripturally as an uh, ana uh, analogy and so when we come to the lord we come with a capacity to receive things from the lord his love and his knowledge that he pours into us and if we continue on this path the lord in if we choose to this all ha has to happen from choice if I choose to not be comfortable, I will go and make, try to enlarge my capacity to receive from the Lord. And when my capacity becomes bigger, my capacity to overflow also becomes bigger. And so that is a view of being in, not in this complacency, but I, the Lord showed me that complacency is from this place of where you just stay and you're like, oh, I'm this big of a cup and that's it. Right. I, I feel good. I get filled. That's it. I put a cap on it. No more. I don't want to move up to a quart, to a gallon, to a barrel, etc. So that was just something that the Lord showed me. And um, I mean, in, in, in it, other words, the whole the whole entire thing we're bringing up is that um, I did not want to be a week to week living Christian Sunday, Sunday. Um, how do you say Lauka? Uh, pedo, pe no, not pedestal. Um, it's a it's, bench, yeah, bench. bench to bench, bench warming Christian. I don't want to be a bench warming Christian, that's right? Yeah, and my thing is that I never want to get into a comfort to become a bench warming that's good. Christian. That's good. So, yeah, I, I, I uh, so I, I'll try to keep this succinct because I actually have, I could say, you know, talk about this for, for probably hours, literally. Um, <laughs> that's my number Part two, one, three, four, five, <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, my number one complaint with the church in America today, particularly America, I mean, I work with churches in Pakistan and they're not like this so much, the leaders that I know at least, but the number one complaint of churches in America today is that we have, we have abandoned the Great Commission. We give it a lip service like it's something, oh yeah, yeah, it's good, but we don't actually do it. Yeah. So I'll say, I'll say two things to avoid complacency. Number one is actually understanding the priority that evangelism has in the church. So there's three parts to the Great Commission. Go and tell the world, preach the gospel, baptize those that believe and teach them to deserve all things Jesus commanded, right? So we have the evangelism, baptism, and discipleship. But the second two parts are actually contingent on the first is evangelism. Because if you don't do that, there's no one to baptize and disciple. So you mm -hmm. have to evangelize. Yeah. That is the foremost thing in the, in the Great Commission. And, and Paul says in 1 Timothy 1.15, he says, This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Yes. That was the purpose. Jesus says, I came to seek and to save that Amen. which is lost. That was the whole purpose. So you see, like the church, the church today, we have, you know, the idea is that we're not all given the same spiritual gifts. We're not all evangelists. We should all be evangelizers and doing the work of evangelists. But we're all like these spiritual parts of a car. You know, the car, you know, I, I had I had I had to fix my rotors the other day and swap them out. Something Oof. like the caliber kind <laughs> of kind of like tore them out big time. But here's the thing. That was like a part that was going wrong. And here's the thing. The, the rotor is not is not the same as the alternator. It's not the same part. Definitely. But the thing is, both are needed to function the car correctly. Same thing yes. with all parts of the church, but we all need to be coming to the same purpose, and that's being on mission, reaching the people with the gospel. I mean, that, that, that same, what you just said, is I think the biggest hindering for most churches is because they take that and they make it into such a big religious aspect. Well, he's the hand. He's doing the works. I'm just the, you know, I'm just a blood vessel. Or like I'm, I'm just a foot. I'm, I mean, like, like he's, he's this. I'm this. So I'm not supposed to be doing that. that. That's for the missionaries to do. You know, that's what they. Yeah, or do. that I'm not. Even, I wasn't called to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. So you're putting a title on it, and or you're just limiting yourself to this. My, my favorite know? example is that when when uh, these three girl, young girls were talking about the new perfume, and they're like going crazy about this new perfume, and the and the pastor comes up to him, and he's like, Hey, um, let's go talk about Jesus to some people, and they're like, No, 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 I'm not an evangelist. He's uh. He's like, uh, no, they said, no, I'm an introvert. And then he's like, well, well you're, you're, you're a, uh, not an evangelist, but you're a uh, Maybelline evangelist. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's good. Like, and he's, and That's he's good. like, kind of like puts that into perspective. But like, 
uh you can keep you can keep on going that was the one thing that once show like most churches put that into like yeah. oh well i'm not the hand or i'm not the head i'm not this like mm-hmm. yes yeah, so we're, we're all we're all called to share the gospel in my opinion. yes i think every single one of us even if it's just you know the people in your life day to day you might not be called to travel to pakistan and speak to thousands of people it's not that's fine you know i'd love be to be sharing yeah it's it'd be a great experience but another thing you mentioned about complacency is is being filled with the spirit uh, this is important you know if you look at second timothy i think it's verses 19 through 21 chapter 2 19 through 21 paul talks about that if a man purges himself from the dishonorable vessels he'll be acceptable for the lord's service and that's important so you have to understand evangelism we think of it um, you know, I know Andrew and I, we do it so much, we almost get kind of flippant with it sometimes. Like, it's not that important. But you have to understand evangelism is is the word of reconciliation. This is God's appeal that he designed before the foundation of the earth was ever formed. He's designed this message. He's planned this message. What Christ did on the cross. And he's given us this message to take to people. We're literally taking God's appeal. You know, Paul says, I, I beseech you in Christ, uh, as ambassadors of Christ, I beseech you in Christ said, be ye reconciled to God. We are taking a message from heaven we're taking it to people this is god's whole plan of the whole earth mm. be reconciled to god this is such a spiritual event we're taking heaven we're putting it to earth saying like hey god loves you god wants to reconcile you he killed his own son in your place so he does not have to punish you and it's such an important thing And the church has gotten so distracted with whatever whether it's religion or programs and small groups or whatever if we're not bringing this to those I people we're you know, it's we're missing the whole point. That's the, yeah, we're just missing the whole entire gospel. Yeah. And I, what would you want to say? So I think um, what you said is how do you how do you stay in that um, mentality where you're evangelizing? Well, I think what most churches are doing now mm-hmm. is most churches are thinking, well, um, if any, uh, gospel is offensive. It is offensive. Yep. Um, most churches that are evangelizing. Uh, you know, the, you look at the church. It's like a bunch of misfits. It's like tattoos and this. It's Hybrids. Like, we don't want sort. those. You know, we want the educated, the smart, the doctors, the lawyers. Well, what did Christ said? Not many wise among you, not many wealthy, not many noble among you. So why is that? Well, because the gospel is offensive. It and is. it takes humility that, um, that my works are nothing. You know that every single religion on the planet Earth will say something's wrong with us. Yeah. Something's wrong with us. But they all uh, apply it uh, differently. So Hindus, they all they understand something's wrong with them. They understand that, that we're sinners. There's something wrong with us. So we have to appease our God. So what they do, they take these huge hooks. When I was in India, it's, it, it's really graphical. They put these huge hooks in the, your back. And you'll wow. march down the streets where people, people will literally pull oh these uh, bu- these hooks or, or by a rope and you have just blood gushing out that's them appeasing god for their sin you know the wow. the, the buddhists and you know and different the, the six they do all these different stuff to appease their god but you know we don't have to because god you, you it's impossible for you to appease god it's impossible for you to fulfill anything he says because he, he, he's perfect you know he's perfect so their religion is how we can uh be good enough for god that's how that's that that's how religion, what we can do for God. Look at our righteousness. Uh and Christianity is completely flipped. It's what God did for us. It's yeah. not what we can do for God. It's yes. what he did for us and recognizing that we are a crooked stick. Definitely. We are very much a crooked stick, but God can take this crooked stick and draw a straight line with it. Yep. It's like the you know? the saying um God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. Mm-hmm. And that is just one of those or things come, that, come to me and rest yeah, yeah. not to come to me and uh put hooks into your back yeah and and it's yeah that's by faith that jesus christ rec- that we recognize what jesus christ did so you're saying how do you stay in that like how do you stay in that mindset yeah. um um i i really genuinely believe um it's a change of lifestyle you have to recognize you can't you can't you are privileged to work for god you are privileged to share the gospel i always say this um uh, uh nothing good happens if you don't do nothing that's so true. you're not sharing the gospel. Nothing good's going to happen. And there's millions of people going to hell. And um, we have the message to to help them. We actually yeah. talked about this in the previous podcast with Cheggy about this perspective that some people have of like, they don't, they base their whole life after they become saved on, ether, on, on eternity versus actually, like Jesus said, uh, let, let your, your will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. So they are, their whole mentality is like, hey, I'm going to go constantly just focus on, on heaven. And that's it. People down here, like, 
I'm just focusing on myself. Be be as holy as I can. But all y'all right here, like y'all need to find Jesus your own way. And just this whole perspective. Right. I mean, I mean, with I, that right there. So you say, well, I'm going to live a holy life and we're going to be good. I'm going to focus on myself. Like a monk. But yes. But, but here's the thing. Exactly. Like like monasteries where we just go and, and, and block ourselves off in the world. But here's the thing I would actually submit to, to you is that is that being sanctified, being holy includes evangelism. No, because exactly. we're yes. called to do it. Yes. This is a commandment. It's not a yes. suggestion. I mean, the, the, uh, I feel like uh, just like some practical, I feel like we can just move into testimonial time because mm -hmm. te uh, for me, I believe the testimony is that, yay, God, do it again. Amen. And uh, it, like you share a testimony. And so, I mean, like my biggest thing that, that for pretty much got me into um, change my, my mindset, like this past year, especially was um god didn't call me to be a uh, what's called god doesn't care about me becoming a doctor he doesn't care about me becoming you know this professor he doesn't care about me becoming a nurse professor. he doesn't care about all that those those are just qualifications for myself but for him the only thing that he calls me to be is to be a son Amen. you know and the son carries out the father's will and the father's will is so the heaven would come to earth yeah. you know the, the will of the heaven would be on earth and i feel like the biggest thing that has applied in my life and the, i'm just gonna let you guys share after after this but about what's what's been some testimonies but the biggest thing that has applied in my life about evangelism is that when i go out when i do everything else i point to people I, I point to people and i say guys your works your your whole entire being your, whatever you do that does it doesn't really matter at the end of the day the only thing that matters is that if you come to him and you're able to rest on him fully like king asa in israel when he saw the multitudes of the armies he said god i rest on you you know it's not about me fulfilling this it's about you fulfilling this mm. and that's what i like sometimes we push ourselves to be dependent on ourselves when we go to evangelize and we push ourselves mm. and we push ourselves but in in the biggest thing i feel like the only push that we need to make is to push ourselves into becoming more rested on god so that it would be less of us and more of him Amen. that's good yeah that's absolutely right yeah I think what you just said is very, very good because uh, when you recognize that it's actually Christ doing it through you. So the thing is, we can't save anybody. We don't save souls. I never died for anybody. That's so right. It's impossible for me yeah. to ever save a person. So God doesn't command me to, sh to save people. Uh, that's his job. So, it's, so this, this, it, takes, it takes three people to save somebody, actually. It takes me sharing the gospel, that person who I share the gospel with to believe it, and it takes God to save them. So there's three people who have, or three persons have to come in to save one person. Me sharing the gospel, he has to accept what I just said, and God has to come and save him, which he will always do his part. So we have to recognize that when we share the gospel, we're actually not, we, our job is not to save that person. Yeah. It's simply to proclaim the gospel. Sometimes, like, 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 like Kyle mentioned once, like we do evangelism here, right? We do evangelism, we share the gospel. Uh, there's a person in, um, in India or Pakistan, he can do just as much as effective evangelism is here, but nobody can come to Christ. That's true. He's just sharing the gospel. He's sharing the gospel with thousands of thousands of people. That's all God asked him to do. But does he see results? No. But is he still doing what God asked him to do? A hundred percent. Yes. But me, I'm here in the States where people are more receptive to the gospel. And I'm going to share the gospel. And people are saying, wow, yes, I want to accept. And people come to Christ. So who is more valued in God's eyes? It's not the person who, where people are actually coming to Christ more. No, it's the person who actually actually going out and actually sharing the gospel. There's a Bible verse that says um, obedience is greater than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about is literal explanation of that. Yeah. Um, and for example, bringing up testimonial e examples, I know in my life, for example, starting Beachside, right? In our area, like the prayer and worship um, gatherings we do. Like I remember days where it was just like me, yeah. literally. And I'll just come a couple weeks in a row, just me and uh just spend time with the lord nobody would come then next week i don't know five seven people come next week maybe nobody would come whatever but the lord like gave me the opportunity to have those times right mm -hmm. um and just constantly like go do this go do this and mm -hmm. out of just simple obedience it you go and do it because mm -hmm. you know you can go out and think about the numbers like oh hey nobody's coming like let's roll up the tape um it's we're easy done to get discouraged yeah, yeah definitely and you know it's uh something this one pastor always talks about like it's not about the numbers yeah. it's not about the instagram followers it's not about how many people 
watch you, view you. It, you know, starting this whole podcast, um, I don't know if you guys heard, but we took this as in faith. Yeah. And like the very first time we recorded it, we didn't even have like video or anything. We, we had an Instagram video going and somebody right after we finished, she's like, hey, thank you for laying this out. Like this really helped me. And just because of that one person, I forget like everybody else after that who thanked us. Just that one person, God leaves the 99 for that one. Mm -hmm. That's right. And just out of simple obedience, you do this big thing, which maybe it only does affect one person. Like uh, this one preacher, he set up this whole stage. It was in uh, New York. Um, I think it was like in the city area where the ice skating rink is. Um, nobody came. They had flyers and everything, you know, whole shebang set up like professional. Um, nobody came. And all he saw was like some people who were like homeless or whatever. He shared the gospel and they received. He's like, just because I got to do that, I'm still grateful to the Lord, even if the rest didn't come. Because it's the Lord leaves the 99 for that one. That's good. Wow. Yeah. And I, I kind of like I, you asked for testimony, so I can give you a testimony. Yes, but please. I kind of want to piggyback it on a sort of certain angle from what Andrew said. So we're called to evangelize, and evangelism simply means if you look this up in a, you know, um, evangelisti, evangelistes is the Greek word for evangelist in Greek. If you look Sounds that up, so almost Slavic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. If you look that up in any Greek lexicon, you'll see that it's just, you know, someone who pro proclaims good herald, you know, good tidings, the proclamation good news, of the yeah. good news. Like, that's exactly what it is. It's, so people get this idea that if, hey, if I go to evangelize, um, and, some, and if they don't get saved, I'm failing. But here, here's the thing. We're just simply called to proclaim the gospel. That is simply it. Yes. Now we should do this wisely. We should do this lovingly. We should do this. And while we're presenting ourselves to the Lord in the holy vessel, we should do all these things to help that. But we are simply the vessel of God's message. We are not doing anything extra other than that. So I did, I did an evangelistic, evangelistic service um, over a Skype call in Pakistan this morning and yesterday as well. Wow. Um, we had over 500 in attendance in, in the two days. Wow. And we spoke to these people. And, and the, second, the second service, well, we had, we had um, a couple hundred people uh, raise their hand to accept Christ as their Savior. And the second one, I, I actually asked them, asked them this. I said, raise your hands if you want to accept Christ as your Savior for the first time. And we had a couple hundred people raise their hands. And they raised their hand, and, and they went and put their hand down. And one thing I said to them, I said, I said, I said, hey, hey, um, put your hand back up. I know it's a little bit less hands went up this time because right? I said, keep your hand up. And I said, I want you to do this. And to give you some context, you know, Pakistan obviously is, is comes from Islamic society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in Islam, the worst sin that you can do is called shirk. This is the worst sin in Islam. And that is saying that God has a son. If you affirm the gospel. Wow. You are committing the worst yeah. sin in Islam. Not know that. It's called shirk in Arabic. Um, so I, I actually did this on purpose. I said, okay. Raise your hand. I want you to say, I want you to repeat this after me. I'm speaking through an Urdu translator first, but I said, I want you to repeat this after me. Um, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose from the grave. Right? So this, you know, Islam rejects that completely. They say it. And else they kind of look at each other. And I finally said this. I said, I want you to say this after me. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And this is um, blasphemous in Islam. And these people are stoned for that. Yes, they can be put to death for this. And they're looking at each other. But regardless, a few hundred people said that. Wow. And that's, and that's yes, God. encouraging. Like, I love seeing that. It's just an amazing blessing to, to be the vessel, to bring them the message. But one thing Come I understand on, is that not all of those people are sincere. Uh -huh. And now someone would maybe stress out over that or they think, okay, they're not really saved either. Let's, let's see the fruits. Or some people say, oh, praise the Lord. We got 500 people saved. Like, oh, thank God. And, you know, you got to take a balance in that and just say, hey, I simply brought the message. That's all. I, I did. That's it. I, if no hands were raised, I still succeeded in my job. You did your part. In evangelism. Yeah, I evangelized. I don't care if no one raised their hand. Everyone raised their hand. Does not matter. My job was simply to bring those people those messages. Yeah. Your reward is not how many people came to Christ. Is mm -hmm. it? Were you faithful in evangelizing? Re simply it. Reminds me of um, in the Bible how sometimes the prophets would bring a message that wasn't pretty. Mm -hmm. And yeah. basically, you know, you're the only one and all your prophet buddies around here are like saying the whole opposite thing. And you're like still going faithful. Like, what, this what is was, what the Lord said. What was that king in Israel that um, Ahab. He, what, he, he, I think it was Ahab. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. No, 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 it was a king that asked uh, for his prophets to tell him, should he fight this? Ahab, uh, I think. Yeah, I think it was Ahab. And uh, he said, he said, why are you guys all agreeing with me? Uh, where is the prophet that always disagrees with me? <laughs> and like he goes and finds, um, I forgot, man, 
it's like I, I, I forgot that this one thing because it was so long ago that I read it, but uh, it still rings out completely. Like you're not supposed to go with the masses; you're supposed mm-hmm. to go with God. Right. And that's it. And Andre, share, share some testimonies from your side, from just evangelizing yeah. and, t- and speaking. So, so uh, evangelism is actually a really neat thing. Uh, what I recognize and realize in my journey with Christ that when I evangelize, I actually get the bigger benefit than the person hearing it. I yep. feel there's a, some kind of joy that comes in. Uh, with sharing, with sharing the gospel, the joy that comes from God that f- overfills you. Can I jump in for a sec? There's a Bible verse um, just to <laughs> encourage you and even support this. Um, it says, "Those who refresh others themselves will be refreshed." There you go. So good. So yeah. going on. That, that that joy. So I, rec- I re- recognize that um, um, that Satan uh, himself uh, he, uh, he doesn't know your future. Um, he, 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 when he looks at you, he doesn't know your future, but he, he's, he has two main things for you in store. First is to forget you to not to hear the gospel. Mm. So he will get you addicted. He'll get you with drugs, with sex, alcohol, everything he can. So when somebody like me or like us will share the gospel with them, they'll scoff, they'll mock at it. Ha! There's a person that really died for me. Who cares about me? What, what, what crazy message is that? And will scoff at it. So that's his that's his first plan is forget people to, to get so addicted and attracted to Satan that the gospel becomes foolishness to them. And Apostle Paul talks about that. The gospel is foolishness to a lot of people that hear. The second thing is we can accept a Christ. So the second uh, step he has for us is that if those people who did hear about Christ, who, who didn't care about the worldly pressure, that he has a second step for you is to get you to never evangelize. Yeah. By getting you again into lust, you know, idolatry, pornography, sins, alcohol, hatred, all that stuff to get you to bound in. When it's your turn to share the gospel, you'd be like, Psh, I'm not good. Look at me. I'm, I'm struggling with my own junk. Not in my life. qualified. I'm not qualified. I'm never going to do it. So, um, so every single time I go on the street, oh my goodness, Satan will, will always try to bombard you. Oh, look at you, Andrew. Come on. You have this problem, this problem, this problem. And I agree with Satan. You're right. I do have this problem, but I'm but. a cricket stick <laughs> and God can really hey, draw a straight line but. with this cricket that's, stick. And I go so yes. and I got my <laughs> marching orders from Christ. I have yes. a flag to follow, a song of victory to, to, to mm. sing. And I'm going it. I'm going bold as a lion and I'm not going by myself. I have Christ and his armies going with me. And the thing is, so I'm only going to be here for plus or minus 80 years in this planet. Oh, there's a lot of people that need to hear about Christ. Amen. And somebody's got to get the job done. You know, pick up a shovel, do something for God. God wants every single person to do something. So when I do go in the street to share the gospel, um, is it is it the easiest? No. You, but you, does it get better versus time? You get skillful? Yeah. So um, sharing the gospel is a unique thing. And it's a, we, we have to see it as a privilege. So mm-hmm. last Saturday, we went on the streets. And one of my, one of my friend, Jeremy, uh, he uh, were passing out actually the New Testament and gospel tracts. Um, so... If you give somebody um, just a Bible, well, it's not technically evangelism. As long as they, if they have, they have to either read it or see the, you know, read it or see it somehow or hear it. The gospel message, the gospel message has to has to be heard or you know, or read. Some form has to enter their mind, has to enter their heart. So what we did is we passed out gospel tract with New Testaments with uh, the gospel tract. We we'll actually staple gospel tracts, a piece of papers on the New Testament. So we're walking around. And uh, people is a big fair in Sarasota downtown. Was it the so, seafood festival? There you go, the seafood yeah. festival. Yes. Surprised we didn't see you guys there. So yeah, <laughs> so we we're walking around and uh, we're passing around, and uh, Jeremy's like, "Man, nobody, people are taking the gospel tracts, but nobody's taking, nobody's taking the uh, the, the the New Testament, the New Testament of John." So we just decided, hey, what if we just hand them, hand it to them? And instantly kind of look away and I give them an opportunity to say no. So we're like, sure. So we just start walking around and actually passing them away. And as I say, hey, this is to you. And I walk away to give it to another person right away while I hand it to this guy. They all of a sudden, they, the eye contact is not there. So they feel awkward saying no. So they just take it. <laughs> so <laughs> so we, we we just have fun. Sometimes yeah. it's okay to have fun give, passing around gospel tracks. So we, we we passed around 149 gospel tracks uh, that day. Dude. We'll drop them. We, we we have these cool things that look like $100 bills. We drop them in places. <laughs> People pick them up. We have That's fun awesome. with them. But as long as the gospel is going out, we will actually share the gospel with people. We'll hand them out. We'll staple it uh, at different areas where people can read it. Um, but you can have fun with it. But as long as you do one thing, people are reading it. It's coming to their hearts. 
or their their um go ahead right i was just gonna um you can go ahead and finish if you want yeah, i was just gonna add about these yeah that's that's the gospel tracks right there that we passed out yeah so these are gospel tracks i don't know how, how many times like people have told me i'm just gonna do this for the camera so they can see it so it looks yeah. like a hundred dollar bill when you fold it up people pick these up and i don't know how many people times people have, have, have always told me gospel tracks don't work and and you know what the problem with that statement is is that they have a wrong definition of evangelism they think that evangelism is saving people so they think well you know how many people do i get saved and i i was at dinner with this guy one time he's been a christian his whole life and he's he's just he's just he's going on with his diatribe just you know griping about gospel tracks why they don't work and i'm like okay and, and what he's and he's saying this because i actually stuck a gospel track on the bill at the restaurant and the funny thing is while he's he's griping about gospel tracks i'm actually watching the waiter read the gospel track behind his head so oh actually, that's so good he's watching it so i'm like okay I'm just gonna let him finish, and then and then he's he goes and he finishes his. He's like, yeah, and that's why I don't like gospel tracks. I'm like, okay, I'm like, and I start telling the story how I actually got saved after reading a gospel track, and he kind of had to eat his words, and it's actually I'm gonna say it's kind of enjoyable to watch him have to eat his words there because the gospel tracks are some of the most effective ways of evangelism. You know, the reason why is these can go places where you can't. Um, unless, unless you're like Into someone's wallet, exactly. Yeah. Like, like if, I'm at, if I'm at Starbucks and I can, I can give somebody a gospel track, you know, here's the thing in the drive through I don't usually preach the gospel with my words when I come in there, but here's the thing. This can go where I can't, I just, yeah. you know, leave that Place for on there. Exactly. Yeah. And they, and and they, they see it. that and they're like, what is that? It looks cool. And they'll open it. What they're doing, as long as they read it, the, the message goes inside their heart. It's That's a, a seed. seed planted. Yeah. Now, if, if they get, if that. they heard the gospel, that seed has been planted. Maybe one of you guys would be doing a talk show or something. They hear it and they hear the gospel again. And then somebody said, hey, would you want to give your life to Christ today? And uh, they're like, wow, you know, I've heard it somewhere. I'm convicted of this, you know, and God, Christ, it's something in my heart saying that I do need a savior. I do need somebody to pay my sins. I always say this, either you will pay for your sins for eternity in hell. Or you have to find somebody to die for your sins. I can't die for your sins. I have to go to hell for my own sin, you see. But you have to now find somebody else to die for your sins, which is Christ. And when, they, when they're when they exposed to that, well, like, well, if I don't want to die for my sins. Well, there's only one person is who can, is Christ. So, and they can come to Christ. And there you go. A soul saved. Uh, not wow. because not not because I'm, I'm fancy or, I, or did anything. It's because the gospel is planted and Christ make it, made it increase. I want to say what Andre said about having fun with the Lord when you're doing ministry mm -hmm. is one of the most important lessons I've ever learned. Because the moment where you going and serving the Lord feels like a job, that's the moment you started losing sight of actually what it means to serve. And what is the Psalm 100? You know, serve the Lord with gladness. Yeah. Not just serve the Lord with drudgery. Serve the Lord with Definitely. gladness. Definitely. And there's a second thing that the Lord actually, when we were talking, wanted me to say, and I think it's very important because when I was younger, I had this misconception like, oh, like uh, I see this big preacher. I He's like millions of stadiums, whatever, you know, and I need to also fill that much. Right. But that's not true to everyone is given their measure. Right. So, for example, to uh, to Kyle, it might be. Uh, a hundred thousand people for his whole lifetime, right? To Andrew, it might be a hundred thousand and one person. To me, it might be a hundred thousand and two people. To you, it might be a hundred thousand and three people. To somebody, it might be only a thousand. To somebody, it might be actually a million. And to all of us, it's a measure. We don't personally know, but we can, how can I put it? If you put it in statistical terms, uh, can most likely accomplish that term or number by being open and in simple obedience, always saying yes to the Lord and never feel like, oh, I see that guy uh, being like on this level, like he has this much ministry followers, whatever. It's not about the numbers. It's about your simple obedience to the Lord. And as long as you have that simple obedience to the Lord and always say yes, when he tells you, hey, son, can you do this for me? He loves you. He understands you and you're doing the best you can. And he understands that and sees that and you're going to receive the same reward in heaven as somebody who did uh, a million and you did a thousand and you both were obedient to that same yes that he asked you to the obedience is, is key um <clears throat> we're we're pretty much getting close to the, to the end of the talk show this has actually been pretty fun i've really really learned we i've should, actually learned a lot we should have you guys um if you have anything you know in this ending time share if you have anything like on your heart right now that you specifically want to like tell the viewers um maybe some kind of like 
prayer if you guys want to pray for them or just um some kind of random thing that's not specifically about so what every, we were everybody about. In, in other words everyone's giving the message and uh uh i've heard one podcast and in the podcast the guy just said god's giving you a message and uh, if you could share that message like i like what you said can you share the gospel in one sentence that was good yeah so just uh just to end it off i just wanted to give both of you guys some time to just give a few sentences a few minutes to just your message for the people from god mm -hmm. um i let you go first andrew mine's, mine's pretty quick okay so yeah so if you're listening to this and you're saying man like that's the gospel is that simple is by faith i don't i don't have to uh be a good person uh, i don't have to really try to fix my life uh, 100%, your God will take you as you are, a crooked, broken, messed up person you are, and he will actually change you as long as you're willing and say, God, I want to come to you in faith. God will change you. That's you if you're saying the gospel is that Jesus Christ took my sin and he died for him on the cross. If that's you today and you want to respond to that, 100%. If that's you and you said, I want to accept Jesus Christ right now, I just ask you to pray this prayer. See, this prayer does not save you nor will it ever save you but it's only by faith so if you pray this prayer by faith right now you will be saved wherever you listen to this to and you can just pray this dear lord jesus i recognize that i am a sinner and i recognize that i'm not a good person and i do do a lot of wrong things but i'm so thankful that 2020 years ago you came and you died for my filth for everything i've ever done wrong please give me that perfect record Die for my sins. Die for my record and give me this perfect record so I can be this person that you want me to be. Because I can't do it on my own. I can't love the people that spit on my face. I never died for them. But I know you died for them. So you can love the people. You can deal with the people that I can't deal with. So can you love through me? Can you work through me and use me? And I believe and I confess with my mouth, Jesus, you are Lord and you did die for my sins to prove me that my sins are paid off. You, Everything you said in the Bible is true and faithful and that you are Lord. So God, with my mouth, I confess that you are Christ, and that you did die for my sins, and the third day you resurrected. Please take me to heaven when I die. I surrender my life to you, and I open myself up to you in service. Here I am, God. Just use me, and just do whatever you think is right, Lord God, in your eyes. I am all yours, Lord God. From this day forward, I have faith that all my sins, from the, the second I was born to the second I die, all my sins have been paid off on the cross. And I take that by faith. And I say that I am a child of God Amen. and Jesus is King. So if you yes. believe that in your heart, if you really confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior in your heart, and you really are saying, God, I'm, I, I'm humbling myself to you in service, um, you will be saved. If you just have faith that your sins are paid off, you will be saved. And what do you do now? Well, find a healthy church. Find a healthy uh, uh, congregation that can mentor you. Um, uh, start reading the Bible. The first thing you want to do is start reading the Bible. Uh, you, you don't want to be a, a baby with malnutrition where you just, you're, you're a spiritual baby. You just accepted Christ. God instantly just gave you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's job is not to clean you and cleanse you. Uh, you can actually stay with the Holy Spirit and allow yourself to be grown by the Holy Spirit. Or you can give yourself to the flesh. And the Bible says, if you live of the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. You don't want to do that. You don't want to... You don't want to be a corrupted baby or malnutrition or sick baby, which you will be if you are still continuing your sins and your lusts and your greed. You will be a, a, a this a, this a infected baby, uh, in thinking that uh, you, everything's good in your life. No, you're 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 going to be sick. So what you need to do is you need to read the Bible, get close as you can to the Holy Spirit, find a good church that can grow you, mentor you, a Bible study. Always read the Bible, pray, get connected to God. And just trust him because the Bible says the good work that he has started in you, he will he's faithful to complete. So just trust in him in that. And um make sure that you're uh you're um you're really, really praying that in faith because your works will never save you. Your uh everything you're trying to do will never save you. It's only by faith that your yeah. sins are paid off. That is really good. Thank you. Thank you so much for for saying all that stuff. Yes. Um guys, you, you still have. don't and i know don't <laughs> be don't be thinking that um just a prayer will save you but a prayer is strong enough to bring you closer to christ yeah, so his faith. his work and his life can transform you yep all right so i hope you guys if you guys need that please rewind back and listen to it one time five times ten times 18 18 times i don't care as many times as you need to until it starts hitting your life the way it needs to 
Mm. And Kyle, if you could, if you could please share your. Sure. So um, I guess my thought would just be to Christians out there who want to follow the Lord, but are maybe find it difficult to evangelize for whatever reason that may be. Um, you know, I could do evangelism training for, you know, tons of sessions at your church and I could teach you how to do it, but I think there's a root to it. Um, there's two great commandments. Love God with everything that you have. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. So we love God because he first loved us. Peter yes. tells us, right? And we have this love because Romans tells us he shed it abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And John says that we're the love that the Father loved Christ with. He's in us and that love is in our hearts as well. So that ability to love, the agape love, the God's love comes from God. So just like we love him because he loved us and his love is in us, we also get love for other people um, from him as well. And with that being said, when it comes to um, loving others, we need to do it with with his love. And if you, you say you love somebody, but here's the thing, you could give them everything in the entire world, but if they that doesn't profit them any if they if they lose their soul. That's mm-hmm. true. The only so thing true. you can do for them in true love is is to well, this is the starting point, I'd say. This is the first run. You have not truly loved somebody who is unsaved unless you've shared the gospel with them. Yeah. Yeah. So you say, well, I'm struggling with that, Kyle. It's awkward. Yeah, I know. It is awkward sometimes. It's awkward for me. It's awkward <laughs> for Andrew sometimes. We do it a lot. It's still awkward. But here's the thing. Ask God. This, this is my one thought. Ask God to show you his heart in lost souls. Ask him to, sh- to show you the love that he has for the people who are on their way to hell. Ask him to reveal that and illuminate it in his word, his love that he has for those people. And I think that will help you in evangelism. Yeah, and I if and if you guys you. want to get evangelized, if you want to get training, uh, GCS, which is Kyle's a part of too, uh, they do trainings. And if you want to get a training on evangelism, contact uh, these two guys. They'll give you Kyle's phone yes. number. We'll probably uh, link it down in the description. Yep. And you guys, yeah, the you guys, website. Uh, yeah. You guys be able to get you get uh, materials, uh, tools, Bible tracts. Uh, you can actually stay and uh, get a part of a class where we actually train you, which you know how to evangelize, what evangelism is, and what evangelism isn't. We simply want you to uh, to be equipped to empower to you go and share the gospel. That's it. Well, guys, thank you did, for coming. thank you so much for for coming. That literally, I've learned so much from you and Seriously. so much from you. Yeah. I, I've always kept learning from you every time. Every time I see you, we honor you guys. You are awesome uh, men of God. It's, and, it's a privilege, uh, guys. It's our it's our, our but, privilege. For the viewers, guys, thank you so much for watching. We're going to be back again next week for uh, The Path Believer. Uh, th- next week will be in, in more of an interview type of stuff. Deep talks are my favorite, but interviews <laughs> are really good to know and to see how God's working in everybody's life. Uh, but, but be blessed. I'll see you next week. Goodbye. See ya.